about to commence. Just wait. There's a welcome first there. I'm sure you enjoyed your evening meal and um, it was very special. It's already The good. staff will still be busy collecting the plates, so if you could just put them together in a central area, that would be helpful. I'm going to read from Psalm 33. Sing for joy in the Lord, you righteous ones. Praise is becoming of the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Sing praises to him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy to the Lord. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. And the earth is full moment, of the goodness of the Lord. We welcome you <coughs> and we are now going to join in a time of praise and worship. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to all of you on the Sabbath Sing Along who are used to tuning in with us in about 15 minutes time at... Um, every Friday evening. We're currently at the Gold Coast um, in Queensland, Australia, at the incredible journey, for, for their benefit, that's right, I need to speak into this. We're not used to using microphones. <laughs> so we are at the incredible journey partnership weekend at the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. So we have with us a, um, a live audience that you can just have a little look at. Say hello, everyone. There we go, coming round. Oh, I hope this doesn't fall off. Oh, look at all those lovely people waving to you. There you go. These are the partners of the Incredible Journey Television Ministry. So we're going to just sing for 40, 45 minutes, and then we're going to introduce you to Gary Kent, the um, speaker for that ministry. So we're going to start with a request that was sent in that is the hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. And that was sent in. Oh, here we go. That my, Bruce and Jenny McCusker. Oh, that's you. <laughs> that request, they are here. Lovely. When We All Get to Heaven. So folks here in the room, if you want to sing along with us, you're welcome. If you feel your singing voice is going to put the person off beside you, don't feel you have to sing. But we, we all want to make a joyful noise to the Lord. And you keep sending in your requests online, and we may take some requests live here as well. So let's start with When We All Get to Heaven. Oh 
have introduced ourselves to those in attendance, but for your benefit, we've got some faces on here that you may not have seen for a while. So just briefly, we're going to start at the other end. You got Christian and Christy Sibek. Happy Sabbath. Who have the night off from their family. Their children are being looked after. <laughs> so they are here, childrenless. <laughs> Behind is Mr. Joe Tyler, who hasn't been Hi, with everyone. us for a while. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. Told you you'd still see him on live events. So, <laughs> And um, right with me here is my own niece, Phoebe Enterman. Happy Sabbath. And my brother, Gary Enterman. Great to be here and associated with this wonderful weekend. Yeah, yeah. And I'm Sandra Enterman, of course. So um, I reckon we've had a an online request who happens to also be a present person. <laughs> what do we do? Do we take one of your requests or one of theirs next? Maybe one of yours. Don't be bashful. Amazing Grace. Amazing. <laughs> she gets two requests. <laughs> that lady already had the last one. <laughs> she said no one else is requesting. <laughs> great is thy faithfulness. There's a good hymn. Okay, let's do great. Is thy faithfulness. <laughs> the one thing I love about the Sabbath sing along viewers, they will always let us know if they can't hear someone or if something's too loud. Or, it's just so organic and wonderful. So I hope the sound is good for you this evening. We're making sure these folk can hear as well, but happy Sabbath and welcome.
there's something really special about singing with family. I love singing with anyone and everyone, and I get a real joy out of getting with all of these different crews on a Friday night. But it's a bit special to have these two. <laughs> Just lovely. Okay, so now we will take a request that came in from the folk who watch the ads. What about um, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus? There's a, a lady named Katrina who has tuned in regularly and she's asked for this hymn for a friend who's been diagnosed with stage four cancer. And um, she knows that Phoebe's on tonight and she knows Phoebe, this is her favorite hymn. So why not, let's do that one and we'll get Phoebe to, we'll get Phoebe to do all the solos tonight. <laughs> How about it? <laughs> Send it through a name who that person is. We'll certainly pray for you. 
Alrighty. In the house, do you have your favourites ready? You know, they're begging for that online, so they're going to be... Oh, are you typing it? Very good, She's a smart cookie. Power in the blood, let's do that one. Okay, how many of you in here are typing in your requests on the screen? I love it. Someone in the house? Or okay, down the back. Marvelous Grace, if you know that one, pull up some lyrics. If you all know that one, feel free to pull up lyrics. These dear people don't have lyrics to follow on a screen because um, we're not quite set up. Oh, Phoebe's about to learn a new song. <laughs> Always happens on the sing along. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. What's it called? It is. It's maybe one hill. Is hello to the people watching in Dunedin, New Zealand, and also in the Philippines. Oh, Hi. nice. Happy Sabbath to you. Yeah. Okay, you just have to tell you later. <laughs> Thank you. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Your
making that guitar sound like a ukulele. <laughs> I love it. So that was an online uh, request. So, Jimenez, what would you like? A legitimate online request. That's right. Soon. Oh, so we're actually doing that one tomorrow as with you all properly with words. Would you wait till then? Oh, what a gentleman. Do you have another request? He's like, no, that was it. <laughs> we'll come back to you. Okay. Oh, do you know Anne Kennedy? That's a tricky one to learn on the fly. It's really mal very locked and busy. Okay. She's willing. And then what a friend we have in Jesus. How much time do we have? Okay, we're going to try Anne Kennedy. Bibi's willing to learn on the fly. I love this. Luckily, it just is verse, verse, verse. And by the end of it, you've picked up a new song, so. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. It goes really low, but then really high. So. Okay, let's try this. Oh, there's lots of words. Sometimes I pull up words that I'm not sure that I trust, so it's like... And I love musicians who just know how to choose keys that are kind to us. <laughs> Let's see. Take it. What a friend was it? Yeah. What a friend? 
We have in Jesus. Lovely. Let's do that one. Sorry, I will be better with the video. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> what a friend. So if you've tuned in late, we are coming to you live from the Incredible Journey Partnership Weekend at the Gold, in the Gold Coast of Australia. The Incredible Journey is a television ministry that um, here in these parts is on Sunday morning on 9 Gym at 8.30. But if you're tuning in from some other part of the globe, you can watch it on the Hope Channel, Hope TV, or on 3ABN, which is Three Angels Broadcasting Network. So if you're not familiar with The Incredible Journey, look it up, Google it, find it, and, and see if you can watch it where you are. You will be hearing from Gary Kent in about 15 or less than 15 minutes. We'll bring him on. He's the speaker for that ministry. So you'll become familiar with him and his ministry very shortly. Hang in there. What a friend we have in Jesus is what we are going to be doing now. So I'm, I'm not seeing a title, Sparrow, so if you don't hurry up and suggest a children's song, I might take one from the audience here. Okay, children's song. There's a child there. Oh, here's a child right in front of us. Is he ever impressed? Pressure's on, buddy. What's your favourite song? And then I did see the request for Mansion Over the Hilltop, if we all know that one. <laughs> and in the eight more minutes that remain, <laughs> would you like Do Lord? <laughs> I know I'm 
know it's been a while for most of us. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I just think of children's songs at our ages. Hey. What, we, yeah, what was it? <coughs> My God Loves Me, Deep and Wide. Yes, to which one? Deep and wide. Oh, okay, actions are tricky with microphones. Here we go, Deep and Wide. <laughs> So let's sneak in Mansion Over the Hilltop was the request I think came online. Is that okay? Let's do that. We're going to get two songs in. Mansion. Okay, multitasking. Here we go. Mansion Over the Hilltop. Oh. <laughs> you could see what I typed. It's never going to work. <laughs> We could do three songs. <laughs> Silver line, I'm going 
if you only could hear them, they were singing up on that song. Okay, so um, I did see another request for I Just Keep Trusting My Lord. You know, that's another good, easy to sing, rousing one. Should we try that? Yes. Okay. Oh, lovely. And then we'll finish with Abide With Me. But just know, don't hang up. Don't leave because you're going to get to hear from Gary Kent once we finish singing. D. And we're in the key of D if you're playing an instrument along with us. <laughs> Thanks, Christy. Uh, I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord and He gives us all. weekend here at this event is actually wake up call and so we've chosen a lot of music on that theme and a lot of the songs that lend themselves to that theme are found in the older hymnals so it's like learn Phoebe learn <laughs> but um, there are some great songs that we're going to unpack this weekend we haven't really noted noted that theme in this sing-along for you but know that we are living in grand and awful times as the old hymn writer put it don't we Jesus coming has got to be just around the corner. So look, we would encourage you to just always be mindful of the times in which we live. And really, abide with me to end this segment this evening is an appropriate hymn because we need Christ to be with us on this journey ahead of us. We need to know that we are safe in the arms of Christ as we go through the tough times. Hey. So we're not going to pray with you or do a Bible promise. We're just going to sing Abide With Me because the program is not over. And um, you'll get to, to have a prayer at the end with Gary Kent, who's going to come on shortly. In the key of C, Abide With Me. So again, if you've never heard of this ministry, just look up the incredible journey uh, television.
Do you think the other clicker would speed that up, or am I going to have that delay each time I, I change? Is there, John, is there anything we can do to... Or is, that, is this working all right? Well, that won't do away with the delay. Let's try the other one. I explained to John that I always take my own clicker because this one is idiot proof. And uh, it's the one that I need. But he assures me that there are better ones. So, uh, John, we're going to take your word for it and we're going, to, we're going to test it as we make our way to another of the beautiful sites of Hawaii, some of the most beautiful beaches in all the world. Now, Hawaii has a population of about one and a half million people. But over 10 million tourists make their way to Hawaii each year. It's such a fantastic, wonderful, and beautiful place. Scattered across the, this region of the Pacific, a number of islands there, and you'll notice the largest of those islands is called, by the name, you guessed it, Hawaii. Now, Hawaii is the largest of the, the islands, as you can see. And I want you to cast your eye along the, mm, the right-hand side of the island and just make your way up through those village names there. And you'll come to one called Laupahauhau. Can you see it there? Laupahauhau. A beautiful place. Right on the coastline, covered uh, along the, the fringes of the, uh, the palm trees there. A truly majestic place. But my friends, there's a dark and sad side to Laupahauhau. And I'm going to share the story with you. On the 1st of April, 1946, there was a huge earthquake in the Aleutian Islands. 8.6 on the Richter scale. And that earthquake caused a tidal wave. It produced, in fact, the largest tidal wave or tsunami ever recorded in modern Hawaiian history. Now, the warning waves as that huge tidal wave or tsunami approached were a wake-up call. A wake-up call to the people along the shores of Hawaii Island. And uh, the tragedy is that as a result of this tidal wave, 159 people drowned, and 24 of them drowned right here at Laupahoho. Let me share the tragedy of Laupahoho with you. The first large waves began to roll ashore early in the morning. And it was the time that the school children were making their way to school. They were walking, making their way from the village of Lapahoho, where most of them lived, to the school that was situated right here on the foreshore. The wake-up call waves were seen. And the warning, the call went out, a tidal wave is coming. A tidal wave is coming, flee to a higher ground. But when that water, those waves, came in, they very quickly receded. And they receded so quickly that they left large fish stranded on the sand. And so as the wake-up call, the warning call was given, Flee, rush to higher ground. There they were. Those big flapping fish, helpless on the sand. And many of those there couldn't resist the temptation to rush down and grab the fish. And then it was, friends, 
that the tsunami struck. A wall of water over 15 meters high. 24 of those there at Hoho. Among them, those who stayed behind to gather fish lost their lives in the tsunami of Lapahoa. The receding waves left those fish behind, some delayed to gather the fish, and there you'll find the memorial with the 24 names of those who lost their lives at Lapahoa. You know, friends, as I consider what has happened since we were last here on the Gold Coast together? As I look at what has happened and continues to happen in our world, I wonder if we come perhaps to a similar place as the people of Lapahoa. When I look at what's taking place in our world, what has happened since you and I were last here, I wonder, I wonder if we've come to that place. Friends, our world is very different today than it was when we met here four years ago. We live in a different world. And I believe that God is giving us a wake-up call. But are we dilly-dallying? Are we waiting behind? To gather fish, dawdling, hesitating, lingering. Friends, God is giving us a wake up call. The question is are we ignoring that call? I want you to consider what has happened since we were last year. Just let's consider. The first year, 2020. We were last here May 1919, remember? 2019. 1919, too long ago. 2019, we were last here. And oh, so much has happened since then. But I just want to focus on one year, that first year. And let's look at what has happened during that time, 2020. You remember the year started with those huge bushfires. Do you remember them? The largest bushfires in the history of modern Australia. And then those bushfires were followed immediately by huge storms. And we saw hailstones the size of tennis balls. And then, as if that wasn't enough, came coronavirus. We've never heard of it before. What is this? How long is it going to last? What will be the implications? We saw the, the closures, the cancellations, the borders shut down. And our civilization was brought to its knees by a microscopic parasite 10,000 times smaller than a grain of salt. Our great civilization humbled, humbled. Because you see, friends, coronavirus, we soon discovered, attacks our physical bodies, our mental condition, our culture, and our very way of life. Corona, Corona, COVID, we nicknamed it, has changed our world forever. But what does it mean? Can we make any sense of this? How do we understand it? What does the Bible say about what's taken place in our world? Well, friends, as I mentioned, this outbreak, I believe, is a wake-up call that God has given us. And we're going to look at seven prophetic signs, seven wake-up calls. We're going to listen to the words of Jesus. 
as we try to understand what is taking place and work out where we are living in the stream of time. What does it all mean? Let's start with coronavirus. First sign. Just think of this for a moment. 700 million cases worldwide. 7 million deaths. Just think about that for a moment. That's more than the population of New Zealand. It's about a third to a quarter of the population of Australia. Lives lost due to COVID. And of course, the question that is asked, and as we were running our office during this time, that's what people wanted to know. They were calling us, wanting to know, is this a sign? What does the Bible have to say about this? And it's a good question, friends. Is the pandemic a sign? Well, as you know, the Bible does mention pestilences or viruses. In Matthew 24, Jesus outlines the signs that will tell us his coming is near. He starts and he gives a series of warning signs, wake up calls, prophetic signs to tell us where we are living in the stream of time. Let's notice, friends, what he says. There will be famines and what? Pestilences and earthquakes in various places. Now, I want you to notice the end of that passage. What does he say? All these are the beginning of what? Birth pains. Birth pains. Now, friends, pestilences that Jesus mentioned there, if you check your dictionary, you'll see that they are contagious or infectious epidemic diseases that are virulent and kill large numbers of people. That's what a pestilence is. Now Jesus mentions pestilences as we approach the nearness of his return. And you'll notice here that he uses an analogy. He uses labor and birth as an analogy of what it's going to be like as he comes, when he comes. Now, as you know, especially ladies, labor begins with mild and uh, uh, infrequent contractions. And then as the nearness of birth comes, you notice that, that they become more rapid, more intense. And that's what Jesus is saying here. The signs at the end of time will be the same. They will be similar. They will begin mild and further apart. And then as we approach the nearness of Christ coming, the nearer we get, the more intense and the closer together these signs will become. They will become more intense and closer together. Signs that Jesus mentioned, my friends, are becoming more intense and closer together. That's exactly what we see happening in our world. It's exactly what we saw happening with the viruses. Do you remember Ebola? Then came SARS. Then MERS. And then we were struck with COVID. And it wasn't just one strain, but remember we had COVID-19, Delta, Doomsday, Mu, and now it's at Omicron, and there are many more. More intense. Closer together. The main point of what Jesus is saying here in Matthew 24 is to watch for the prophetic signs to increase in frequency. Are you following me? This increase will be a sign, this increase and in intensity will be a sign, a wake-up call, that Jesus is coming soon. Which means, that while we don't exactly know the precise date or time of Christ's coming, we can know that it is near. 
And so while COVID might not signal the immediate end of the world as we know it, it's a wake-up call for us to set up, pay attention to what is taking place around us, and prepare for Jesus' soon coming. So then we have sign wake-up call number one, pestilences. Do you remember some of the other things that happened in 2020? It's amazing how quickly time flies and how we forget what happened. Do you remember watching America burn in 2020? As different events took place as the election drew near, we saw the looting and arson and violence rioting uh, writing in the major cities right across America. Unbridled lawlessness in the heart of the democratic world. You name the big cities and there they were, burning on fire, experiencing lawlessness. Minneapolis, New York, Los Angeles, Portland, Atlanta, Chicago. Unbelievable. We watched as they burned. And friends, at times, there was a total breakdown of law and order. A total breakdown of law and order. Do you remember the calls to defund the police? Lawlessness, my friends. Lawlessness. I remember watching in unbelief as the election draw, drew near and the, the shopkeepers in downtown Washington were covering up, hammering their, their, uh, covering their windows and their doors try to find protection because they realized it was lawless. It was lawless in the very heart of the democratic world. We saw the crowds gather. We saw them actually make their way right into the very heart of democracy there on Capitol Hill. You remember, friends? And let me tell you this. That lawlessness is not going away. And I'll tell you why. Because the issues are only becoming more defined and more divisive. Issues like abortion. Just watch, watch what is happening in America right now. Abortion. Marriage. Marriage has a completely new definition to what it had just 30 years ago. Racism. Transgender issues. When, have you ever heard of that 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Friends, these are the issues that are dividing us. These are the issues that are calling, causing lawlessness in our society. And it's not just these issues, but if you look at the, what is taking place around the world, we see fanatical religious groups, denominations, on the march, wanting to wreak havoc, lawlessness. And we see it also in the very heart of Europe. A rekindling of a past concept that virtually destroyed Europe. We see it breathing again. We see it gaining momentum again, gaining popularity again. Lawlessness. Do you remember what Jesus said? Matthew chapter 24, he says, as we move towards the end of history as we know it, as we move towards the second coming of Jesus, he said, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And friends, we see that today, we're going to discuss that as one of the evidences that we see taking place in society around us right here in our own countries. So, there we have, let me get used to this thing, there we have our second wake-up call. Lawlessness. And then let's have a look at what's been taking place in the natural world, particularly in 2020. We spoke about the fires, the largest fires in history. Friends, you know that fire is one of the signs that Jesus gave, let me just say, in the first six months of 2020, 
at least 207 disasters were recorded globally in just six months. Just six months. Remember what Jesus said? It'll be like birth pain. As you see those contractions growing closer and closer, then you'll know that my coming is near. We've seen an increase of 27% over the previous year in 2020. And three times more than 30 years ago. Friends, the number of disasters is increasing. We've seen the earthquakes, the volcanoes. The number of natural disasters is increasing. Right through the spectrum, whatever it might be, as far as natural disasters are concerned. Just take, for example, fires. <laughs> fires have now become what the Bible predicted they would be. Let me read you what the Bible says. Acts chapter 2 and verse 19. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and what? Billows of smoke. You know, friends, the Bible predicts that the natural world and disasters, uh, disasters in the natural world will increase. The fires we experienced in Australia in 2020 were the largest on record. Then the fires that were experienced just across the Pacific in California in the United States were the largest in recorded history. Now the last place that you would expect to find fire would be in Siberia. But you know friends, the Siberian fires of that year were bigger than all the other far world's fires combined. For the first time in the history of this planet, wildfire smoke actually reached the North Pole. What did God say? You will see these signs. God said that there will be upheaval in the natural world and there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. So there we have the natural disasters. Wake up call number three. Other things happened in 2020 that had never happened before, right around the world. Across the globe, we saw a loss of freedom. Do you remember? A loss of freedom that we've never experienced before, particularly in our democratic countries. It was unheard of what happened. Unheard of. We'd never seen anything like it before. Do you remember having to take your smartphone and give evidence of your status before you were allowed in ordinary places, everyday places? Friends, during 2020, we lost freedom of association. We lost freedom of movement. We lost freedom of worship. You know what, friends? It was okay to go to a footy match, but you couldn't go to church. Remember? Isn't it amazing how quickly we forget? We lost these freedoms. God is showing us how quickly things can happen. Freedom of association, we lost it. Freedom of movement, we lost it. We couldn't cross our borders, remember? Freedom of worship, freedom of commerce, freedom to peacefully protest. God, taken away. Freedom to cross our state borders. Freedom to enter or leave our own country. Wow. We lost all those freedoms. And friends, if you study Matthew 24, and Jesus says, pay particular attention to the book of Daniel. And in the inference is, and it's just the book Revelation. We know that our freedoms will be taken as we near the soon coming of Jesus. 
You know, friends, I must confess, I often wonder, how could this ever happen in a democratic society? Now we know, don't we? Now we know. We've seen it with our very own eyes. We've experienced it. Around the world, nearly a hundred governments imposed draconian laws during the year 2020. Loss of freedoms. Loss of freedoms. Another wake-up call. And then, friends, there was something that happened. Not many people realized it or took note of the seriousness of what happened. Remember that during 2020, and remember, I'm just looking at one year. I'm just looking at the fulfillment of Bible prophecy in one year. To see the wake-up calls that God has been giving us. When we lost our freedoms, businesses were closed, schools were closed, factories were closed, and as a result of all that happening, there was less pollution. Ah! Ah! And so people began to remember what our good friend Pope Francis said in 2015. In his encyclical, he said, and let me say this, this concept was picked up by religious leaders, by ecumenical leaders, by government authorities, by scientists, by environmentalists. They all agreed. They said, remember what he said. He was right. In 2015, Pope Francis published his encyclical Laudato Si. And this is the point he called for and made in that encyclical. It was a call to recognize Sunday as the Sabbath and to set it aside as a worldwide day of rest. What a great idea. What a great idea, a weekly day of rest. Pity it's the wrong day. Friends, God implemented that concept at the very commencement of this world's history. A weekly day of rest. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labour and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. And so the cry is going out, calling people back to a Sabbath, but not the seventh day Sabbath. The concept of a green Sabbath, just Google it friends, a green Sabbath is a universal day of rest for the world on Sundays is gaining popularity. We've seen the results of a day of rest. A cleaner planet, a healthier planet, healthier individuals, a better lifestyle. And friends, beware it's gaining momentum. It's gaining momentum. The great religious bodies of the world are coming together and saying, we must have a solution to what is happening in the environment. We know what the solution is. It's very clear. A weekly day of rest. And that weekly day of rest needs to be the first day of the week. And it was just a little later than, that, that, than uh, 2020 that the three great religious leaders of the world met. Let me just read. On the 10th of September 2021, the leaders of three prominent Christian denominations... Pope Francis, Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and the Orthodox Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, who collectively ministered to more than 1.5 billion followers, have issued an unprecedented joint statement calling people of all faiths to take action to halt the devastating impacts of climate change. And friends, we know what their solution is. 
You see, in a very short period of time, right across the world, COVID-19 and its consequences has conditioned people through fear to accept laws and regulations that can be used to restrict freedom of movement, freedom of association, and my friends, freedom of worship. Wake up court. Wake up call. A warning siren. Sunday laws. Something else happened. Another pandemic. In 2020. It wasn't just COVID. You see, COVID brought with it fear. Fear of the unknown. We didn't know where COVID was going. We didn't know how serious it was. We didn't know the impact that it would have on us, our families, our society. A pandemic of fear. And remember how it was lived out? People were afraid, weren't they? They rushed to the supermarkets and they made very clear what was most important in their household. Did they not? But what drove those people? It was fear for you. It was fear. People were afraid. Very afraid. 30% of our population are experiencing high levels of fear. We are seeing mental health issues on a scale that we have never experienced before. Australia's mental health crisis, and it's continuing right to this very day, is now being called a parallel pandemic. And friends, let me say this. COVID has not gone away. There are more COVID cases around today than ever before. And there's the accompanying fear and anxiety that people are experiencing, Wonder what, wondering what's going to happen due to the implications, the results of COVID. We see creeping increase in bad friends, don't we? And people are wondering, where is this going? How am I going to put bread on the table? How am I going to pay my mortgage, afford my mortgage? People are afraid. They're anxious. Remember what Jesus said? As we get close to the time of his coming. We'll see men's hearts failing them for fear for the things coming upon the earth. Friends, Jesus said, it's going to be like birth pains. As you see an increase in intensity, an increase in numbers of these e events, you know my coming is near. That's what Jesus said. So we see fear. People are afraid. Men's hearts failing them for fear. But not my friends. Those who know Jesus. Do you remember what Jesus said? Let not your heart be what? Be troubled. Isn't that beautiful? In a time when men's hearts are failing them for fear, Jesus says to us, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm what? I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Well, friends, this is not a time to hoard cans of nut meat. <laughs> to find a cave under some mountain. This is a time to get close to Jesus. And friends, that's why Jesus gives us this information. It's a call, a wake-up call. It's time to get close to Jesus. How do we do that? How do you get close to Jesus? Very simple, friends. You devote time to Jesus. Time. Think of any relationship. The more time you invest in a relationship, 
the closer that relationship, the stronger that relationship. Isn't that right? You see, friends, Jesus knew that in our hectic lifestyle, finding time for Jesus would become very difficult. Very difficult, even for his followers. Oh, friends, now is the time for us to be reading his word, studying the Bible as never before. Now is the time is the time for us to be spending time on our knees. It's as simple as that, friends. Time. Time will strengthen our relationship with Jesus. But let me tell you this. The enemies of souls, the enemy of souls will fill your day with so many good things that he wants to do. That will be no time for Jesus. You know that? He will fill our day with doing good things. So many good things that there won't be time for Jesus. Oh friends, this is the time. The time for us to be drawing close to Jesus. Spending time in His Word. Spending time in prayer. And friends, the message of this good news the difference a relationship with Jesus, a close relationship with Jesus can make. That good news is going to all the world. People are realizing, they are hearing the good news, they are responding to that good news. They want to read and study their Bible. You know, friends, during COVID, the number of requests we received doubled and sometimes tripled. Why? People are searching for answers. They've listened to the government, the politicians, the Dan Andrews. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not really mentioning any names. Sorry. <laughs> they've listened to the politicians. They've listened to the medical experts. Oh, no, I shouldn't mention that name either. And friends, they are still looking for answers. And now they want to know, does God have anything to say about what is happening? They are turning to God's word. And friends, there is an opportunity to reach people with the everlasting gospel like never before. And I'll tell you why. Every person here, every person in this community has a screen within arm's length. We can reach them through their screens. We have an opportunity to reach people as never before. Let me say this, friends. It has not been possible up until now to reach every person on this planet. But I'll tell you what, you can go to any nation on this earth and they'll all have a screen. A smartphone, a phone of some sort. They'll have an iPad, a computer. Wherever you go, we have an opportunity to reach people with the good news of Jesus like never before. And friends, the message is going. And people are responding. They're asking for Bibles. Can you send me a Bible? Help me understand what the Bible teaches. Friends, the message of Jesus, the everlasting gospel, is going to all the world. Do you remember what Jesus said? And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to how many nations? All nations. And then what will happen? Friends, Another wake up. The message is going to all the world. The everlasting gospel. You and I are actually witnessing the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. We are hearing the wake up calls. The prophetic wake up call is sounding. 
Here's the question. Are we listening? Are we listening? Or are we ignoring the wake-up calls so that we can gather fish? Oh, friends, Jesus is coming soon. And it is my prayer that each and every one of us will draw close to him through Bible study and prayer, through worship, so that when he comes, we'll be found ready to meet him, but not alone, with our families, with our friends. Friends, the wake-up call has been sounded. You think of before COVID, we would never have understood the importance of freedom. Something we take for granted, isn't it? Here in this country, in America, the land of the, they call it the land of the free and the brave. Couldn't happen. God's given us a wake-up call to say, it can happen, and it's going to happen, but on a far greater scale. Oh, friends, let's make sure we heed the wake-up call and that we are found ready and waiting to meet Jesus when he comes. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and goodness to us. Lord, we've just been through a, a difficult and challenging time. It's been four years, Lord, since we last met here. Because of a, an incident, a virus that's changed our world. And Lord, thank you for giving us a wake-up call. Father, we know that there is an even larger wake-up call coming. May we listen to your word and to your voice. And Father, may we all be found ready and waiting to meet Jesus when he comes. For this is our prayer in his name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, friend. Thank you, Pastor Gary. I'm sure that uh, we have reflected, remembered, and our confidence in the Word of God is also being restored. We mentioned earlier at the beginning of the evening um, the, uh, what would you call it, the information to help you make a decision on tomorrow morning's refreshment of your room. Every room has a little do not disturb um, what do you call it? Thing Thanks so much for joining us. It's just a of bunch of emails, life. announcements if now, but thank you there, for having us in your homes. And I hope you were blessed by that message. God bless. We'll see you next Sabbath. It does mean you will need to make your bed.